we're going to end this chapter um, talking about the concept of an inertial reference frame. So you remember before we talked about a frame of reference, um, you know, and we noted that we can really choose um, any x and y direction that we want. Um, but now, what if we talk about um, a system where, for example, let's say I'm in a railroad car, and this car is moving at some velocity v. So inside of it, um, you know, if I'm sitting in the car on the floor and I'm holding a baseball, you know, again, we're both moving at this same velocity v as well. But because we're moving at the same velocity, let's imagine what would happen, what it would look like to me if I decided to throw the baseball up in the air. So to me, I would be sitting on the floor. I have a baseball. I throw it up. It would go straight up in the air, and then it would come straight down, and I could catch it again. So in other words, to me, I would never know that the baseball did anything but go straight up and down. And the reason is because our x component of velocity uh, was always the same. You know, nothing was changing, um, you know, interacting with us to push us to the right or the left. And because momentum's a vector, that means that our the x component of our momentum never changes. So to me, I see you know it. I can be in this constant moving railroad car, and any th any experiments I can perform, I would get the exact same results as I would um, as if I was just sitting on the ground outside. So in this case, this is what we would call an inertial reference frame. So it's a frame that I can conduct any any experiments and it's as if I'm not moving at all. Okay? So in the last video we talked about a case where what happens if I have a spaceship and I'm inside the spaceship. Well, it looked like a perfectly good reference frame and it looked like a perfectly good inertial reference frame um, and for all intents and purposes it was until I collided with the wall. And once that happened, we realized that that actually wasn't a very good reference frame to choose because um, we, we would seem to lose momentum unless we, actually could, unless we actually include a system that has the wall and the earth included in the entire system. So we always want to make sure whenever we're doing any kinds of calculations that we always use inertial reference frames. Um, and so your book gives you know, two main criteria. So the first is that our reference frame um, is not rotating. Now there actually are ways um, to deal with a rotating reference frame and in fact in some cases um, it can be easier to do that but in, in, not in anything that we're going to be doing in this course. The second thing is there should be no significant uh, external uh, interactions. In other words, um, in the case of the railroad car, you know, we're assuming that we're moving at a constant velocity. We're not slowing down, we're not stopping, um, because slowing down and stopping are changing our momentum. And changing our momentum um, would be some kind of external interaction. You know, similarly with uh, with our spaceship example, it's completely uh, you know it's a fine reference frame um, as long as we're not doing something like hitting a wall because that because we can uh, I think all agree that hitting the wall would be a significant external uh, interaction. So that should wrap up this chapter. Um, so you should be able to work all of the problems, um, you know, all the way up, all the way up through this chapter. Um, the next chapter is going to be the last in this section in momentum, uh, and then you'll be ready to take the the momentum unit test.